Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for leaving me some coffee. Well, that's why I'm drinking tea, because you got the last of the coffee. Yeah, I, I see how this works around here. Hey, you snooze and you want to talk to Jane Doe, <laughs> you lose. I lose the coffee, so now I'm relegated <laughs> to a cup of tea. Yep. Just wanted to read some words of wisdom from Abraham Lincoln. It's not the years in your life that counts. It's the life in your years that count. Well, like I keep saying, it's not the years, it's the mileage. It's the mileage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Words of wisdom for today, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, we've actually... We've actually got more to say, but we'll see how this dialogue develops. Since, you know, we're unscripted and, you know, we don't want to waste our time writing out a script and, you know, following. Because, you know, we tried this in the past and everybody hey, has seen us do it. Throw it right over. Me? Wait, I've seen you do it, too. You can't stay on the script. No, well, no, neither can you. <laughs> because you usually go but, off in another direction. Hey, hey what's good for the goose? is good for the gander. <laughs> There's only a couple of XJWs that know where that goes. <laughs> wow. All right, enough of messing around. Um, we want to thank Christy Ann. She put up a video of a news clip and it's called Jehovah's Witnesses New Low. And I'm going to put the link down below in case you haven't seen it yet. It is very good, and there was so much information when I was digging, looking for it, that it's like, we're just going to have to try to condense it to down a few things. Now, somewhere in my extensive Beezilla, I have a photo of Jehovah's Witnesses and their literature cart preaching right in front of a cemetery entrance and they were talking to families and stuff going in and I looked and I just couldn't find it so it's probably on my external drive you know and that one is a big one so mm -hmm. you know I didn't want to take the time but I do know they do this and this is kind of a sequel to Christy Ann's you know news <laughs> piece that she put up because we found some information to once again prove Watchtower are liars. Well, the, the thing is, is everything that we all do as a community of ex Jehovah Witness YouTubers is always um, an extension of what someone else has already done. Unfortunately, the, uh, the, the thanks no longer comes across as plain as it did seven, eight, nine years ago. Yeah. All right. Now, I want to thank Atlantis for sending me the link to this JW.org experience. And I will put the link down below to that. And this is, I do what I can. This is um, under the About Us Experiences Sharing Bible Truth. And the name of the article is I Do What I Can. And this is Irma. <laughs> she looks like a very elderly lady. And it says, Irma also sends letters to residents in nursing homes. You mean Watchtower is promoting sending letters to nursing homes? Well, no. Well, they're, they're not really promoting it per se, but they use it as an example so that you will follow the example. Yeah. She relates, an elderly lady phoned and said that my letter had given her much comfort after her husband died. Now, before we go on, let's play just a little clip from Christy Ann's um, news piece that she has on her channel, because we have some comments about this part. When we reached out to the ministry, they denied any knowledge of this campaign. In a statement to City News, they say, Our organization does not sponsor any proselyzing campaigns in funeral homes. If an individual is moved by love and faith to share their condolences and the Bible's comforting words with a person in grief, that is a personal choice. They did not respond to our questions about whether this behavior is accepted by the faith or if it goes against protocols for recruiting new members. Okay, so no Watchtower says they're not aware of any campaign. Okay, now those of us that were Jehovah's Witnesses for any length of time, let's be honest here. Weren't they hours 
I was promoting to do informal witnessing anywhere you can. Yeah. Go where the people are. Years ago, I can remember them suggesting right from the platform to look in your local newspaper under the obituary column and write letters to the family. Well, we don't have that anymore. You know, yeah, they probably do have obituaries in the newspaper, but who gets newspapers now? But from my own experience when my dad died in 2012, I know what happens. He was an atheist, and my mom was a Jehovah Witness, and on the funeral homes, you know, they have these um, memory pages for each individual that, you know, their funeral goes through that funeral home. And that's what this clip is talking about. Well, guess what? Because they don't have, you know, everybody in the obituary columns on newspapers anymore, Jehovah's Witnesses have updated the technology in their preaching. So now they look for all of these, you know, funeral notices online so that they can preach to the family. And like I said, I know that for a fact because my dad's page those that knew our family, they knew my dad was an atheist when he died and that my mom was a JW and most of the messages were like, oh Marilyn, now you have hope that he will come back in the resurrection, you know, because his death pays the sins, you know, and he will be back in the resurrection. It was the same thing. It was the same thing. And has Watchtower ever condemned this practice? No! No, they they've... encourage it through their literature and giving experiences like this, hoping that you know you'll um, that you know it'll speak to your subconscious. Yeah, so this is nothing new, and for Watchtower to say, "Oh well, we're not aware of any campaign," <laughs> you liars! You have been pushing it for the forty-nine years I was a JW. You know go where the people are and the picture of them with the literature cart in front of the cemetery that's a prime example has Washtower ever condemned that no in fact guess what there you go those of us that have this old literature is priceless December 2001 kingdom ministry back page Blessings from showing appreciation for Jehovah's love, part two. There's a subheading, paragraph four, writing letters. Perhaps we are unable to go from house to house because of some physical infirmity or inclement weather or COVID. <laughs> we could write letters, giving a brief witness by mail to individuals we know, those who have lost loved ones in death or those who were not at home in the territory. So right there in their list of potential, you know, householders that you can write letters to is those who have lost loved ones in death. Well, look at well, look at you know. Even though they say there's you know there's no campaign, that's what the kingdom ministry was all about. Your campaigning. Yeah. You know, that's what this was all about. If you don't believe me, go back, pick up anyone from 10, 20, 30 years ago, and on, and on the back page, they'll tell you exactly what to say when you're at the door. Yeah. They'll even put the words in your mouth for crying out loud. So how is this not knowing about a campaign? It goes on. Um, we can enclose one of our timely tracts that has an appealing Bible-based message and encourages the recipient to respond if he has any questions. Use your personal return address or that of the Kingdom Hall. Please do not use the branch office addresses. <laughs> but see, this is what they have been doing. Well, it's, it's, really, it's really simple because... You know, when, when you want to put this in a biblical context, I forget exactly where the words are, but I do recall reading at some point, I think it was Jesus said, you know, you that say thou shalt not murder, do you murder? You that say thou shalt not lie, do you lie? You know, you that, um, I, I, well hell, I'll even put this in a modern day term. 
those of you that want to have an open marriage, do you allow your significant other that benefit? This is the hypocrisy that is humankind. Watchtower. Here again, we don't shun. Just go to your website and say, do Jehovah's Witnesses shun? Shun? No. But see, the problem is, is that word shun is not part of your made-up belief theocratic language. Disfellowshipping is, so why don't you change that wording? Do Jehovah's Witnesses disfellowship? Oh, hell yes. What are the consequences when you are disfellowshipped? It amounts to the same as shunning. So you, Watchtower, you call for truth and honesty. Do you bear truth and honesty? No. Not at all. But that's human nature is to lie, deceive, distract, control behavior, control information, control thought, control emotion. Those of you that... Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, we even see that in the XGW community. Of course we do. Of several who want to, um, you know, shut a lot of us up. And what do they do? They label us. Oh, you're just crazy tinfoil hat nutters. You know, or, oh, they're just simple people. Yeah. You know, that's what they will do. They will try their best to discredit you and to shut up truth. You know, they speak out, oh, you know, we need to expose Watchtower and the truth, but look at what they do. They turn around and bully people to shut up. Well, okay, you want a bit of truth, sweetheart? I'll give you a bit of truth. Okay. It's just a foregone conclusion that when you wake up from Watchtower, you emerge yourself into study and research. And what you learn about Watchtower, you cannot unlearn. And some of those people say, you know, do your study, do your research, look at the history. But yet when someone like myself immerse my study and my research into the Bible and into the characters of the Bible, you cannot unlearn what you've learned. You absolutely see a, a make-believe story. But the reality is, is that when you're an eight-year-old boy and you come home from school early and you open up your mom and dad's bedroom and say, Mom and Dad, oh, sorry, sorry, oh, my God. You can't unsee that. You can't unlearn the lie. You're going to have to live with it from here on out. It's just as simple as that. You thank cannot unsee your mom and dad having sex. <laughs> thank God that I never seen that. Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking from personal experience. <laughs> but that's the whole point, friends, is that we are in front of our cameras asking Jehovah's Witnesses to do your study, do your research, identify the lie. But yet when someone like myself or even Jane, uh, Jane Doe takes that, that encouragement a little bit further, you get shut down. I mean, how, how do you unlearn, Kim, when Jesus said, I only have 12 thrones? And those of you that have followed me, you will inherit these thrones. And you will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. How do you unlearn that that is a poetic view of the, the uh, zodiac, the constellations? How do you unlearn and say, hey, Watchtower, it's, it's a conflict. When you say, well, no, no, because see, in the book of Revelation, Jesus says he has 124, uh, 144,000 thrones. How do you unlearn that something in that, that concept doesn't match? Yeah, or like in Revelation when he says, you are the 12 foundation stones, you know, of my kingdom. You know, and then when you start doing research and you realize 12 is actually a divine number that goes way back to ancient Samaria and you know the zodiac the um, astrology yeah. you know circle that has a lot to do with it also so I mean when you do this research and then for someone say to come back to Jesus and it's like 
okay, first of all, which Jesus? Because yeah. there was four at that time. Yeah. You know, which, which, which Jesus do we come? Do we come back to the Jesus that is pro-Torah, or do we come back to the Jesus in secret that declares all foods clean? Which Jesus do we come back to? See, you can't unlearn this stuff. You know, going back to what I said earlier, those of you that call for do your study, do your research, do you shut down people that do their study and do their research? And when you do shut these people down, are you speaking from a perspective of the same study and research that some of us have done? Because if you have not, we can't have this conversation. But I think it boils down to one thing. Everyone is on their own journey. We each have to take that journey by ourselves. We cannot tell anybody else what to believe, what to research, you know, how to think. If we wanted that, we would still be in Watchtower. I'd go right back to the loving arms of Jehovah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. So, you know, I know, you know, some it takes longer than others. But if anything, that's the point I want to make, is we all have our own journey to take. And we cannot tell anybody, you know, how to think and how to take that journey. And I wouldn't want to. The the only question I really, really, <clears throat> pardon me, really have in all of this is how do you unlearn this stuff and, you know, throw it in the garbage can as if it has zero meaning? You can't do that any more than you can unsee your parents coming home school, coming home early from school one day. You can't unsee that. That's forever burnt in your psyche. So when you talk about on learning stuff or wanting to learn stuff, I want to give Christiane and her channel another shout out because she recently did a um, uh, video about Jehovah's Witnesses and Freemasons. Now I know, I know there's a lot of other people out there saying, oh that's bull crap. You will never find Charles Taze Russell's signature on a document. It's not going to happen. The connection is in all the symbology associated with it. So go ahead and ask whomever you want. Ask whomever, you know, whoever you view as an expert on the subject. Maybe somebody who left Watchtower 30 years ago. You might view them as an expert. But if they have not studied symbology, even esoteric symbology, You'll never see it. So until you've done all of this, you can't have this conversation with anybody that has. Yeah, and for someone who has studied a lot about, you know, the Freemason background and Knights Templar, because they are basically, you know, two different branches of the same tree. And there's a lot of symbology in the Knights Templar, the cross and crown. That's where that comes from. Pyramids, you know, that was a big symbol of, you know, their society, you know, their group. So, yeah. So, whatever anybody wants to believe, I don't care. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. what it boils down to. Exactly. Do your study, do your research, and find what you identify with because you just never know where something like that's going to lead. Yeah. So thank you for watching, and I will put the links down below to all of this. And if you haven't watched Christie's Ann's video about a new low for the JWs, I would recommend go watching it. And I do know there are a lot of people upset by Jehovah's Witnesses preaching on their family's, you know, funeral memorial page. Yeah. So Watchtower, when you call for the truth... Why do you hide it when you're asked about certain things such as this? Yeah. I, I just I just don't get it. You you that call for the truth and honesty, do you present truth and honesty? No, they don't. Do you allow your conscience to make you move and get truth 
and honesty out there or like Jehovah's Witnesses do you hide it and do you lie about it because you're afraid to hurt somebody yeah well they hide who they are they hide who they are they're whitewashed graves just yep. like the Pharisees just like the Pharisees so you all have a wonderful day take care mm -hmm. bye bye